Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add a third battery to the electric expedition. Let's go. So there's going to be a couple things you're going to need. First is a battery plate like this. You're going to need obviously a third battery. You're going to need a multi-tool of some kind. And you're also going to need one of these uh, dual battery isolators. I'll explain more about that later. But yeah. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to take any of this off because it, frankly, it did take me quite a bit of time to put it on. So I'm just going to leave it on and just show you what I did. All right, so let me explain how this works. So first, with just two batteries, we have battery isolator here. We've got battery connector one, battery connector two, and then a cable for the controller. So basically with, with just one, with just two batteries, you're going to just have uh, the first battery connected with the first one and the second battery connected with the second one and then the controller cable would basically just go to the controller and the controller to the motor and basically what it will do is it will draw power from both batteries simultaneously and it will keep their uh, charge level about the same now if one battery let's say battery one is 54 volts and battery two is 50 volts it'll drain power from battery one till battery one is at 50 volts and then it'll start draining from both the same time so that's how it'll work if if one is higher than the other but you also have to make sure that both batteries are the same voltage so i know these uh converters can go from 20 to 72 but this is a 48 volt system so you have to make sure both batteries are 48 volts now the capacity doesn't matter like one could be 14 amp hours the other could be say 10 amp hours but you just have to make sure the voltage is the same for this to work so now we'll move on to three batteries it's a little bit different you actually do need two battery isolators but for the first one you you could do this a couple ways but i'm just gonna do it this way uh the first one um you do you got the first battery cable here for the first battery and then the, the second one for the second one just like that but this time instead of the controller cable going to the controller this time it's going to go to the second battery isolator with battery cable if you have the whole thing that would be connecting to the controller cable because you have to also connect them both together and then you've got battery uh, cable three that's going to the third battery that's where you hook up the third one and then finally you've got controller cable actually going to the controller and the controller going to the motor again the same thing applies here you have to have the same uh, voltage all the batteries have to be the same voltage doesn't matter what voltage now let's say let's do let's say it's 72 volts again we do another example here let's say um, number one is 78 volts Number two is 72 volts. Number three is like 68 volts, I guess. Again, it'll draw from the first one all the way down to 72. Then it'll draw from both, from 72 down to 68. And then it will finally draw from all three. And that's how, that's how it'll go. And we're gonna talk about is voltage sag. So let's say we have one battery, let's say it's 48 volts, which is the batteries we're gonna be using. So let's say at um, 50 volts, we're gonna say 50 volts, let's say it has a voltage sag, it goes down, you full throttle it, it goes down to 47 volts. All right, that could be just for one. Now, the more batteries you have, the lower the, volt, the, the, lower the voltage sag overall. So this was three volts. So let's say we have 50 volts for the whole thing, and let's say it only sags like two volts now, maybe. Again, it, it varies depending on how much current is going through it, how much, like how much is full throttle, and we're gonna be assuming uh, the controller's pulling 20 amps. So this is just an example. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I hope it gets the point across. But let's say you have two batteries, you're going to 48 volts now. Now, let's say we had a third battery. Maybe now it's going to 
um, let's say 40 and a half volts. So those are just some examples. Now, where, where is this useful? How is this useful? Well, here's how. So let's say you're almost, the bike's almost dead, right? The cutoff is gonna be 39 volts for 40, 48 volts, because it's 13 cells and it's three volts per cell. So 39 volts is the cutoff. Now, if you only have one battery on there, and you can basically only get down to 42 volts before you wouldn't be able to full throttle, it'd probably be slower. Then you'd have less overall capacity. Now, if you have two batteries, you can go down to 43, or 41, sorry, 41 volts. And then if you have three batteries, you can go down all the way to 40, or 40 and a half volts, then it would finally give out. But basically you can extend your range because you have more usable capacity. Now, and that, that brings up another thing. Um, what's better, a 48 volt, let's say 60 amp hour battery or three 48 volt, 20 amp hour batteries? Well, that you would think they'd be exactly the same, but for the reason I mentioned, the three uh, 20 amp hour batteries are gonna have more capacity because this is gonna have way more voltage tag. Let's say it's at 50 volts, full throttle, it goes down to 45 volts, five volts. And then this probably won't have as much because three batteries are pulling for just one. And they're all They're all pulling way less current so you probably only get like 47, sorry, 47 volts or something. So you'd be able to use more capacity. And once that, of course, drains, that's gonna be, it's gonna be 44 volts by the time this thing is gonna slow down. But this would be like 42 volts. So you have a little bit more capacity left that you could use, if that makes sense. But three batteries is usually gonna be better than uh, one with the same capacity for this very reason. So I just thought I should mention it. So how does this impact range? So let's say one uh, 20 amp hour battery gets you 30 miles range full throttle. And so if you add a second one, you're at least gonna get 60. Probably get more because of the same reasoning of this so you probably get about 65 70 maybe now if you have three of them you go from 30 you get three of them you get 90 probably close to 100 for that reason now one battery from here this could get we could say probably 85 maybe because it'd be drawing so much power but you're not you're usually going to get more out of three batteries than out of one doubling or tripling the number of batteries you have will likely more than double or triple the range you might get a little bit more out of those batteries especially at lower voltages for the same reasons so now we'll get back to the bike all right so let's go to the bike it's not going to be very easy to see but as you can see i've got one right here so a battery plate here. These two battery plates come stock with the thing. And there is another uh, discharger inside here. I just didn't want it. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> it was hard to get it out. So I didn't want to like disassemble it and then put it back in again. So that's why I left it on here. But this one's attached to two batteries right here. And this one is attaching to the one inside here. And then that one's attached to the controller. You can't really see it, I'm sorry about that, but I just didn't want to take it all off because it was hard. But uh, basically just zip tied it to there. I took off the original bolts here and then just bolted one on there so it would be easy to mount it. I also tried mounting it here, but I didn't like it because it got in the way of how I was getting on the bike and whatnot. So I just mounted it back here. Now I'm gonna show you um, how to put them on and I'm going to show you that if they work or not which they will here's how to show you here's how to show if they do work or not so basically what you're going to do you're just going to stick one battery in turn it on 
All right, turning on, then I turn it off and go get my keys. Basically just going to test all of the different terminals to make sure they're all working. It's, that one works, on to the second one. Let's make sure that works. All right, turn the battery on, turn the display on. Display is working. Check the motor, let's see if that works. Yep, yeah, definitely working. Got the third one. Slide it in like this. Just kind of got stuck. This one's kind of difficult. All right, turn it on. Turns on. There you go. All, that's how you know all three are going to be working. And of course, I'm going to put them all on. There you go. All three are working. Motor's working. Everything's working. So there you go. So that's how I added third battery. It's pretty simple. All I did was just kind of route this through here, zip tie that to the frame. And the other one was already in there, so I just had to pull the cables out. But yeah, it was pretty easy. So all you, again, all you need, you just need another one of them. Like just get the same exact one that was already there, and that then you know it's gonna work. And then you're just gonna need a battery plate. Now actually what I did, but I actually already have one, I had the Electric uh, X Premium, and I just took the battery plate, it originally was there, I just took that off there and put it on that bike, so I already had it. But yeah, you're gonna need another battery plate, of course, and some way to mount it, like a tool, you know, multi-tool, so you can uh, screw the bolts in. But yeah, that's about it. You can pretty much do this on any bike, if you have uh, the right things. Uh, if you like this video, if you wanted to see uh, more of these kinds of videos where I try to do different kind of modifications to the bikes, like this video and subscribe if you wanna see some more of this. Thanks for watching. Peace.